Teaching is a tough job. My brother, in his 34th year, he said, Kent, it's not fun anymore. I can't wait to quit teaching. I'm, about, I'm sick of this. Teaching public school up in Illinois. My mom retired from teaching public school. You can invite your teachers to a creation seminar. You can have them call me with any questions. You can ask my secretary, Martha, sitting right there. I take questions all day long and half the night. <laughs> I'll be glad to help. Here's what the ACLU will do, though. They will threaten a lawsuit if somebody tries to teach creation. Now, they know they would lose, but it doesn't matter. The fact that it's going to be a lawsuit is going to be costly for the school. So the ACLU, knowing they'll lose, threatens to sue, and sometimes even sues, knowing the school will back down for fear of not having enough money to defend themselves. They're winning by default. They claim teachers can only teach what is state in state-approved curriculum. Well, that's a lie. The curriculum really starts when the classroom door closes. Every teacher knows that. And every teacher discusses things in their class that are not in the textbook. <laughs> Come on, you can't teach otherwise. They claim teachers cannot correct the curriculum. That's a lie. They do it all the time. I taught math and science for years. I was always making corrections in the math book. And they mislead people into thinking that evolution is a sacred part of science that's never to be questioned. They use peer pressure or ridicule to silence those who oppose lies in the textbooks. Roger DeHart, science teacher at Burlington Edson High School in Seattle, was told he could not inform students of errors in the textbooks just simply by passing out current science journals. If there's a current science journal that said this is wrong, he couldn't tell his students because in the book it said it was right. Some of these lies have been proven wrong 100 years ago. Kevin Haley, biology teacher at Oregon Community College, lost his job simply for exposing errors in the textbooks. Baylor University, formerly Christian University, fired William Dembski just because he advocated intelligent design. He said there must be a designer. Forrest Mims was a science writer for 20 years. He published in National Geographic, Science Digest, American Journal of Physics, 60 magazines and newspapers. He was denied a job as science writer or writer for Scientific American simply because he was a creationist. Rod Levake in Fairbault, Minnesota, uh, was reassigned because he doubted Darwin's theory. They said, we don't want you teaching evolution. We don't want you teaching biology if you doubt Darwin's theory. Dan Clark in Lafayette, Indiana, uh, he quit because he was reprimanded for teaching an evolution alternative. The superintendent, Mr. Ed Eller, told him not to introduce creationism to this class. Well, Mr. Ed Eller, you need to get a different job. We are grass needs mode once in a while. Come on down. We might put you to work if you're a hard worker. Okay? He said, I'm quitting. I'm not going to take this. There's all kinds of articles here. Dean Kenyon was a tenured professor in San Francisco at the university. He'd been teaching for years. He wrote books about evolution, how wonderful evolution was. He was the poster boy of the evolutionist. And then one day he got converted, and they fired him. But he said, hey, I got, I got 20 years. You can't fire me. Oh, okay. They put him in as a lab assistant, you know, washing test tubes. Had to go through a whole big lawsuit just to get his job back, simply because he doubted Darwin's theory. It's happening. We are losing our freedom in one of the most important sectors of society, science. I have always assumed that scientists were free to ask any question to pursue any line of inquiry without fear of reprisal. But recently, I have been alarmed to discover that this is not the case. It all began when I met evolutionary biologist Richard Sternberg in Washington, D.C. His life was nearly ruined when he strayed from the party line while serving as editor of a scientific journal affiliated with the prestigious Smithsonian Museum of Natural History. Your office was over there? That's correct. This here is the West Wing. Directly ahead of us is the West Wing of the Natural History Museum. So now you're not there anymore because you're a bad boy. No, I'm not. No, I was, I was exiled. You're a bad boy. You question the powers that be. What was Dr. Sternberg's crime? He dared to publish an article by Dr. Stephen Meyer one of the leading lights of the intelligent design movement. The paper ignited a firestorm of controversy merely because it suggested intelligent design might be able to explain how life began. As a result, Dr. Sternberg lost his office, his political and religious beliefs were investigated, and he was pressured to resign. The questioning of Darwinism was, was a, a bridge too far for many. The, mentioning of intelligent design that occurs at the end of the paper 
was, was over the top. And I think the intelligent design proponents have raised a number of very important questions. And you wanted to get those questions brought up and discussed? Placed on, placed on the table. Placed on the table. People were so upset about it. They were so upset that you could see their, they had a physical emotional reaction. Wow. They were saying that Stephen C. Meyer is a well-known Christian, that Stephen C. Meyer is an intelligent design proponent, that Stephen C. Meyer is a Republican. It was all couched in terms of religion, politics, and sociology. The way the chair of the department um, uh, put it is that I was viewed as an intellectual terrorist. Terrorist? Because of giving the topic of intelligent design some modicum of credibility. After Dr. Caroline Crocker simply mentioned intelligent design in her cell biology class at George Mason University, her promising academic career came to an abrupt end. My supervisor invited me into his office. He said, I'm going to have to discipline you for teaching creationism. And I said, I mentioned intelligent design on a couple of slides, but I did not teach creationism. He said, nonetheless, you have to be disciplined. At the end of the semester, I lost my job. Not only did this well-loved professor lose her job at George Mason, she suddenly found herself blacklisted, unable to find a job anywhere. So whenever I interviewed for a job, I would be offered it usually on the spot. Since this has happened, and since people can Google my name, I'm finding that when I send my credentials, I do get interviews, I get many interviews, but I never get offered a job. I don't tell them about my, about my uh, science sin. I was only trying to teach what the university stands for, which is academic freedom. There's nothing to be learned in neurosurgery by assuming a, uh, an accidental origin for the, the parts of the brain that we work on. It wasn't just biologists who were feeling the Darwinist wrath. When neurosurgeon Michael Egnor wrote an essay to high school students saying doctors didn't need to study evolution in order to practice medicine, the Darwinists were quick to try and exterminate this new threat. A lot of people on a lot of blogs called me um, unprintable names that were printed. <laughs> there are a lot of very, very nasty comments. Um, <clears throat> other people suggested that people call the university I work at and uh, suggested perhaps it's time for me to retire. I realized when I kind of went public with, with my doubts about the adequacy of Darwin's theory uh, that, uh, you know, that I would encounter criticism. Uh, what has uh, amazed me is the um, uh, viciousness and the, the sort of uh, baseness of it. I'm an old guy. I have uh, tenure. I'm academically safe. But the young people and what, what is happening to them in America right now because of this scientism gulag is, uh, is really terrible. Apparently, Professor Marx was not as safe as he thought. A few months after this interview, Baylor University shut down his research website and forced him to return grant money once they discovered a link between his work and intelligent design. In order to attract grants, you have to market yourself. So you put up sites and call yourself labs and groups and things like that in order to get visibility. And in my entire experience in academia, I never went to any superior and asked them any permission to put up any of these labs. So uh, the fact that this was singled out, let alone shut down, is jaw-dropping. It's astonishing. I have never been uh, treated like this in my about 30 years in academia. Shut up, you freak! I say shut up! It's a man! If you peel back the onion, I think that there is no doubt that the center of this is my work in what would some would call intelligent design. People really get emotional about this. Uh, when you ever say intelligent design in, in a room of academics, them's fighting words. Creationists. Astronomer Guillermo Gonzalez found himself in a fierce shootout with Iowa State University following the publication of his book, arguing that the universe is intelligently designed. Despite a stellar research record that has led to the discovery of several planets, 
His application for tenure was denied, putting his career in jeopardy. I worried about my tenure a little bit in 2005 when the petition was being circulated because uh, I viewed that as a strategy of Hector Avalos and his associates to try to poison the atmosphere on campus against me because he knew I, didn't, I wasn't tenured yet and I was very vulnerable. I have little doubt that I would have tenure now uh, if I hadn't done any professional work on intelligent design. Dr. Gonzalez had this advice for scientists who might be thinking about following his example. If they value their careers, <laughs> they should keep quiet about their intelligent design views. It's the kind of thing where you just learn to keep your mouth shut. In addition to those scientists who are willing to appear on camera, we encountered many more who didn't dare show their face for fear of losing their jobs. You use an intelligent design perspective to get the research done, but you're not allowed to talk about it in public. And so there is definitely incentive, if you think about it, for people to remain within the mainstream.